to race for. He's coming to turn four. Oh, he's hit him. He's done it. What oh, he's done it too. Hello there and welcome to the F1 Esports Pro Exhibition taking place at Interlagos this evening. Now, after some very hotly contested events already over the last few weeks, I know that the drivers are geared up and ready to impress. Now, before we get to the action, I need to welcome a brilliant guest that we had a couple of weeks ago. She's back again, Sky F1's Natty Pinkham. Natty, uh, great to have you back. Excited about Interlagos. Thank you for having me back. Yes, I mean, I was so impressed last time out. Um, itching to come back for more. What unbelievable graphics what an unbelievably tight field and what an incredible amount of skill and focus mm. seriously impressive stuff yeah now um, obviously before we had uh, Shanghai now we're heading to Interlagos yes very different is there much difference between these two tracks now Interlagos I know I voted for Japan in the poll but actually Interlagos, yeah, it, it was you know <laughs> it was a close second I love Interlagos um, it's interesting when you think about the characteristics of it as an actual racetrack in terms of very changeable weather it's a very short circuit um, lots of opportunities to over Overtake, lots of problems with back markers, massively passionate fans. Uh, it's got it all. But how much of that will translate to this, of I course. don't know, and it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, now I know, as you mentioned before, uh, you were very impressed with all that was going on uh, with the drivers. Um, for those of you who missed the action, uh, this will bring you up to speed with what happened in Shanghai. And we are with a good start for the pole seat of Brendan Lee. Rasmussen holding on to second place. Carrington up to third position. So Rasmussen chasing Brendan Lee, who's in the lead. And then it's Carrington in second position as David Tanitza is fighting side by side. He needs to get through quickly if he wants to stay with Lee and Rasmussen round the outside. That's going to be an audacious move if he can make it happen. But with the traction, with the... Yeah, he gets it He's done. He's going to get the inside Beautiful. line, isn't he? For 16th, he's moved up to third. Veers now trying to break the toe. That's what that dramatic move off the corner was. Now who's going to be the last oh, of the lane? Bring it down. One. Coming between the two of them. Fabrizio Donoso says, see you later, the pair of them. Look at the speed they've all got there. Oh, this could end in tears as the Alfa Romeo sent it down the inside. And I think there were about four wide there. But it was Flores Veers who managed to hang on. Oh, he sent him into the wall. Lucas Blakely spins in front of Bono Chris, and Blakely sends spinning after Kiefer aggressively defending the position. Brendan Lee goes a little oh, bit defensive. He's, he's tapped him at the back. He's tapped him again, but he can't find his way through. With one corner to go, it's been incredibly close between Lee and Rasmussen. But if Rasmussen, can he offer anything to the line? No, he can't. And so Brendan Lee will see the checkered flag and he weaves across the line to win in China. So there you have it then. Brendan Lee getting back to winning ways. Uh, season one, season two of the F1 Esports Pro Series champion. Uh, didn't win it in season three. That was down to David Tonitza in fourth place. But a, a nice return for Brendan Lee to get back into winning ways. And Freddie Rasmussen there representing Red Bull. But uh, great if a, if a driver isn't getting those wins anymore, Natalie. It, it, it's nice. It's re reassuring and, and a great relief for them if they can get across that line. Absolutely. And Brendan, we know he's got a lot of talent. Uh, we hadn't seen it for a while. He's a great British racer and had something to prove, and he did that very well indeed out in China. Yeah, he did indeed. Um, obviously, now we'd noticed from the Albert Park track, which was actually the uh, virtual Vietnam Grand Prix, but that's not in the F1 2019 game. Come on, keep up. Yeah, I know. Come on, guys. <laughs> uh, obvious. Uh, but with that, it was again, it was a P1, P2, P3, again finishing first, second, and third. It was actually interesting. Alvaro Caraton uh, stepped up a little bit to get in third place. Wonder if he'll have the same sort of race today. But um, let's talk about the format before we really dive Ooh, yes. in with the drivers. Um, it's going to be an 18 minute qualification here, 25% of the race, uh, damage is on, no driver assist. So this, again, is really, uh, for those who are new to sim racing, is really going to put them under immense pressure to not make any mistakes. Whereas we've seen in the past with the F1 Virtual Grand Prix, you can make the odd mistake here and there. It's fast and furious, there's no margin for error, as you say. It makes it all the more exciting, the adrenaline will really be pumping.
Yeah. Exciting stuff. Uh, in terms of Interlagos, is there an area where these drivers can really attack? Is there a particular area where they can put their foot down? Do you know what? It's one of the longest throttle moments on the calendar when you go from Zhong Sao down to the Senna S's. Um, so, yes, plenty of opportunity to overtake. I mean, if you've ever been... I think you have been to Sao Paulo, haven't you? I've been to Sao Paulo, unfortunately not, but not the Grand Prix. The, not the Grand Prix itself. Just, just saw the party atmosphere right. in the World Cup period. Beautiful. <laughs> I, I miss it very much. But it is. It's an incredible place. It's a very vibrant place and, and the track itself is is the beating heart of such a vibrant city where they're true racing fans. I mean, the fans go crazy. And you've got to remember that it always happens in Formula One at the end of the season. So you've got lots of young drivers going there with with nothing to lose, really, and everything to prove. So they go all out and uh, and give it their all. And I hope the, the guys do the same tonight. Yeah. Now, uh, you talk about young drivers. The average age of these F1 Esports pro drivers in this exhibition tonight are about 21 years of age. Uh, let's look at the driver lineup. Uh, you've got some vibrant drivers here and some new faces. Uh, obviously, uh, we welcome return for Graham Carroll. But uh, a guy uh, that I'm very excited to see in the McLaren on the right-hand side of that screen is Tang uh, Yu, uh, Tianyu, who was the Chinese champion mm. in January. Uh, so he got a lot to prove, and people are anticipating him is arrival into the F1 Esports. He was going to take part in the F1 Esports Pro Draft, but unfortunately that can't take place now. And then the driver lineup again. Will it be a two and two for Brendan Lee? Yes, let's hope so for his sake. But as you say, we're expecting big things um, from the young Chinaman who has uh, who's really proved himself over there in their esports league. But yes, lots of talent coming through. And as I say, what really struck me last time out is just how tight it is. Yeah. You know, it's an unbelievably skilled field. Um, I was talking to a few of the actual F1 drivers. Yeah. Um, who said they are beyond impressed because it's a very specific skill set that takes a long time to hone. Yeah. It's not something that you can just jump into. I think we often assume with a lot of the races that they can just make that jump across and the skill set translates. And it does to an extent. Yeah. But let's, yeah, let's be very clear that these guys put a lot of effort in and it's an accumulation of experience and talent. Yeah, indeed. And you saw Marcel Kiefer has moved to Red Bull, so he's done very well, just like Alex Albon, moved up from Alfatori. Uh, two guys who, who always deliver. We, there's no question about their skill set. They're joining us tonight in the commentating area. Uh, of course, we've got Alex Jakes and Matt <laughs> Gallagher. Uh, do you feel like you've gone through the draft and, and now you're here on merit, gentlemen? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I think that's a very fair way of putting it, Tom. Uh, very much looking forward to this. The standard, as you've covered already, so very high. Yeah. Yeah, but don't get too comfortable because, as we know, with the Red Bull setup, it's pretty ruthless. <laughs> so we'll keep you on your toes, okay? You know who I think is great? Helmut Marco. I've always thought. <laughs> <to it. laughs> uh, and Matt, obviously, uh, alongside Alex Jakes again, uh, you, you sort of commented that like, thrown into the commentating area. I thought you did a brilliant job. Back again. Excited to get into Interlagos. Yeah, Interlagos, what a track. I cannot wait to see how close these drivers are because, as Natalie said, it's a very short circuit. It's going to be so close in qualifying and it's going to be spicy. All right, well, listen, gentlemen, I uh, look forward to qualification. I believe that we can pass it over to you now and get into this. Absolutely. Terrific stuff then. Uh, a short lap in terms of lap time, but one that is so very demanding for the drivers. And we're enjoying qualifying already in progress and the winner last year around this circuit is currently the fastest driver. Danny Berezne, absolutely superb last year, under pressure all race long in the eSports round around this circuit. And here he is right now, nine minutes to go, and a 107.344 is good enough for pole, Matt. Oh, there's only four drivers on a 107.3 already. That's the closest thing I think I've ever seen. Three tenths separating 14 drivers. Brendan Lee, last winner out in 14th with a 107.668. But you know, with the track evolution, we should see times improve and tumble right towards the end. So DRS and back to the pits for Brendan Lee down there in 14th position. So here's Flores Vias who we saw earlier on in the show, involved in plenty of action around the Shanghai circuit. This is going to be a really interesting corner uh, early, uh, later on for the race because it just invites so many different lines on lap number one. And dry conditions, as you can see, not always used to that around the Interlagos uh, track. We're already at turn number four. There's a wonderful flow and rhythm to this. The original track was a bit of a monster uh, with 24 turns. And we have around here 15 for the drivers to attack. And 
And Marcel Kiefer went very well earlier on, practicing, and uh, now goes fast as anyone with a 107.2. So he tries to make the most of the promotion as we come to the corner where it looked as if Alex Albon was going to get uh, his first ever podium, make the most of his promotion, and then unfortunately Lewis Hamilton, uh, it did, well, it didn't work out. And he's been hearing about that a lot on the various streams in the last uh, couple of months and I imagine he will do so again today for the virtual Grand Prix later on but this is all about the esports pros the best in the world at what they do so key for the benchmark time on a 107.2 and Fabrizio Donoso in second place then Danny Beresne who didn't put it on pole last year but did win the race and then Barry Boromund ahead of David Tanitza and Michael Romanidis ahead of the podium finisher from two weeks ago, Alvaro Caraton, who is in seventh position. But I mean, these margins are borderline ridiculous, Matt. It is crazy. Bono Huiz, 10th, a 107.472, less than two tenths off of Marcel Kiefer. But that's just the, the nature of this track. It is so short, uh, just over a minute long. Uh, so it's very much any mistake and you'll fall straight to the bottom of the field. It's great to see uh, the likes of Graham Carroll back in this, uh, the driving seat down in 18th at the moment. But uh, some of these uh, veterans, you can say now, really, from season one uh, coming back to the scene. And, it, and it's great to see. But looking towards the race, 25% race, uh, it should be a one-stop strategy going from the softs to the mediums. Not particularly um, difficult to, to work out the strategy for this one. And uh, I, don't know, I, I imagine the undercut will be extremely important again uh, with the fact that these guys are so close. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five people in the point three crew now. Uh, and five people in the point four crew. So it's, it's great to see how close these guys are, and it just really does tee up um, how how close the entire field is and how amazing uh, th these drivers are. And there is such fine margins. Just one tiny correction, Alex, and you've lost half a tenth, and you've lost six positions. And we saw a moment uh, for Patrick Holtzman coming out of uh, Yunkau corner and going up the hill, and then he abandoned that lap because any sort of lock-up, any sort of oversteery moment like the one we saw from him, well, that's the end of your lap or any chance of improving where you have already posted. That's the driver down in 19th position. Uh, Danny Berezne, although he is uh, currently working his way through the middle part of the racetrack, plunging downhill now. And then he will look to attack. So the driver currently third fastest. That's well placed, but he'll know that traditionally things improve. And Danny Haddad has put it up into P4. So there is improvement out there. And we've got a yellow flag in Sector 1 and Sector 2 right now that has to be resolved. Uh, Beresne, who cuts the beam then, DRS open, and he's looking to attack as we head down to the final five minutes of the session. Just uh, two cars in front of him, Fabrizio Donoso and Marcel Kiefer, and uh, he's just been displaced by his alpha teammate for the event today. Barry Boromund has gone up to P3. Yeah, I haven't really seen too much of uh, Barry Boromund, but it's great to see him up in P3 giving Danny Beresne something to think about, that's for sure, even though it is only 100th separating <laughs> the two. But it's good to see, because Danny Beresne has always had the edge over, well, I say always, apart from Brendan Lee. Since then, he's kind of moved away from uh, Mercedes and Brendan Lee to try and get that number one spot. But if he has uh, Barry Burman for, for company, then it's going to make him push and work even harder to find those extra thousands of a second that he requires uh, around this Brazil circuit. Marcel Kiefer, the only man in the point twos at the moment, I imagine we'll see... Uh, a very low 107, maybe a 0.1 or even a flat uh, when we get to the final stages of this qualifying session. Because as I mentioned, track evolution, it does get quicker as these guys go round, just like in real life. And uh, it will rubber in nicely for their final attempts. So let's see the lap from Berezne then. Fastest of anyone so far goes over the line and posts a 1 minute 7.2 to take pole position by six hundredths of a second for the moment. We'd uh, a few moments ago seen an improvement for Brendan Lee, but nowhere near the pace that he showed uh, a couple of weeks ago in Shanghai. Berezne, the driver to beat, Caraton now onto the front row, and Johnny Tormela has gone ahead of his teammate. We're looking at Marcel Kiefer at the moment, taking that wide line. Uh, Fabrizio Donoso in the pits, along with Barry Burmond and Daniele Haddad. So, as he goes over the line, plenty of improvements still to come. Because we've still got a fair, I mean, it's a short lap here, and there are, there's not a lot of time to be found out there between drivers. So, you've got the pressure of having to deliver, but trying to find the limit. Well, that could, that could really blow things. If, if, if 10 drivers improve here, Matt, you could find yourself with an absolute heap to do uh, later on uh, 
this afternoon. So definitely trying to use all of the road and a bit more there, Marcel Kiefer, uh, going deep over the kerbs. It's usually the sort of moment that would cause a bit of a problem. So he's choosing to run in the gap and he's choosing to take advantage of that clear, empty track of the 15 turns of Interlagos, a lap that runs to 4.3 kilometers. He's trying to master it, only three cars in front of him, but he has to deliver. If you run in the gap now, you've got to take advantage of this empty track. Yes, you do. There's now eight people in the point three crew, which is <laughs> ridiculous. Very, very popular, that point three time. If you improve, if you have Bono Huis and you improve by one tenth of a second, you go from 12th to, four, uh, to fifth. So that's, that's the margins that we're working with here. Usually in the F1 Esports series, what we saw, what we saw last season was, was slipstreaming, uh, teammates helping out each other. I don't think uh, with the fact that this uh, hasn't got any prize money on the line that they'll be <laughs> helping each other out so much. I think this is all, just, all to play for. If they manage to find somebody on the back straight, um, then they, they could gain uh, a tenth, a tenth and a half, which could be crucial to get towards the front of this field. But right now, Danny Beresney still at the front of this field, still showing that he has got the pace to take it and I'd just love to see him actually go for the title in this F1 Esports series. He's been, he has so much pace, so much personality, he'd be a great champion but it's just never worked out for him, whether it's hardware issues or whatever, he's you know, had spins, crashes, just hasn't worked out for him. So looking to gain a little bit of confidence with this pro esports exhibition race. Final two minutes of qualifying then to set the grid for the quarter distance race that we'll have in a few moments time. There are, if you can put a mega lap together, there are a lot of places to be gained. But in doing so, that is a bit of a risk. Out laps at the moment for your pole sitter Berezne and Alvaro Caraton, who in the Williams had a great run. Tried the alternate strategy and very, very strong podium last time out. That's better than we've seen for a while for Johnny Tormela and Marcel Kiefer, promoted to Red Bull for this race. Then Fabrizio Donoso, the runner-up of the very first eSports Championship back in 2017, finds himself in fifth. Michael Romanidas, the teammate to the driver we're looking at at the moment, in sixth. And then it's Boromund Benito and then Haddad and Brendan Lee rounding out the top ten. But that could well be very different in about 70 seconds' time. So you need to get the right track position. You do not want to do what George Russell did, which is uh, pull over to the side of the road, try and get a different, uh, let a few cars by, try and get the best track position, then find yourself accidentally getting a penalty. Want to try and award that, but these are the best esports drivers for the F1 2019 game. And they are about to show us why as we go to the final few moments. Berezne, the driver to beat, now joined on the front row by Lucas Blakely, who's put it in the one minute seven uh, two tenths club as well. So very, very tight at the front. Who's going to come out on top? These are the pressure laps. Well, that's a question I don't think I'm uh, <laughs> capable of answering when you've got uh, <laughs> six people in the point twos. But it's great to see Lucas Blakely up at the, at the front of the field. And it's a point that I mentioned last time, but it's. it's I feel like some of these guys just aren't able to perform under the lights, in front of a crowd, because you, you see some of these names that you're not used to seeing. Caraton was, was kind of off the pace last season, Blakely as well. But when they're in the comfort of their own homes and they've got everything they need, their orange squash, whatever they're drinking, they, they're much more relaxed and look how quick they are uh, coming into, well, if you're not over the line and you're setting a lap time now, that's your qualifying done. So Johnny Tormela will get another chance to perform so will the Mercedes in front of him. Brendan Lee down in 12th, Bono Huis in 14th. The 107. Oh, a flat from Danny Beresne. Look at that, that is enormous pace. That's the sort of mega lap I was talking about. That's what you have to produce under pressure. He loves this track and he's delivering at this track. Does anyone have an answer to Beresne's one minute, uh, seven seconds and pretty much flat? Uh, with just 79 hundredths there. We're on board with Johnny Tormela in fifth place at the moment. Carrotton can't improve, neither can last year's champion uh, Tanitza, but Haddad can and gets himself onto the front row. He's a couple of tenths, uh, well, he's about a tenth away from that lap. So Johnny Tormela now down to sixth position. Boromund in seventh, Longay in eighth, Vigang uh, joining the grid in ninth. Kiefer is down to tenth, Tormela over the line and Tormela stays where he is so Haddad the big winner at the end there managing to improve and Kiefer goes over the line to displace Haddad and Marcel Kiefer has got himself onto the front row at the end his teammate unable to improve Kiefer in the Red Bull has managed to do so remember these cars are all equal but Kiefer I think just being put in the Red Bull well he's taken a step forward 
and uh, Danny Berezne, though, the class of the field, and he finds himself in P1 after, well, he was fastest when we went to him earlier on, and then he delivered again, and that was just a supreme lap to take Polo into Lagos. It absolutely was. What a what a qualifying session we had. So close. Tom, did you, uh, did you enjoy that one? I uh, loved it. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, Natalie and I were enjoying it down here. The fact that you were saying it's just point three. There were so many drivers, neck and neck, such a train going on. But Danny Perezny, we know uh, last year in the F1 Esports Pro Series, he won three uh, 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 Grand Prix in Belgium, Italy, and of course, Brazil as well. And he's mm. looking like he's got the talent to do it again today. Well, clearly he loves this circuit and uh, he's performing so well at it. Uh, it's an interesting point uh, that Matt made about being the comfort of your own home. I wonder how that kind of shifts your mindset. But yes, he's got pedigree. He's won five times in his career. Um, he, he's proved himself six poles in his career. So, um, and he's just added to that tonight. Yeah, indeed he has. Um, listen, I mean, it, it fell off the championship last year. There was one moment, uh, you might have missed it now, where he broke his brake pedal uh, in the actual arena here. And that mean he was a, a DNF for mm -hmm. the race. But he, he pushes it to the, to the, to the absolute limit. Um, David Tanitza is going to be trying to catch up. Um, and as Matt said, and I think that's an interesting point, that they do feel more comfortable where they are at home and they can send it a little bit. But it's interesting in terms of the sim racing, you were doing a bit of exploration into this, weren't you? Yeah, well, I was interested to know what the significant differences are. And I talked to Anthony Davidson, who, by the way, wasn't trying to justify his performance or lack of thereof. Although, by the way, he just performed very well this weekend. So congratulations to him for that. But he was explaining to me the difference between sim drivers um, and uh, and gamers to this extent now and he explained that a sim development driver's job is to develop hardware of a simulator to make it feel like a real car mm. Whereas this is all about lap times. It might sound like an obvious thing to say, but there is a, there is a big difference there. Um, the other thing that I'm really interested uh, mm. to sort of analyse are the cues that are different. The racing drivers will obviously be good at gaming because, you know, very similar skill set. But they have to forget their cues, you know, most significantly G-force. But also the fear factor, the mm. lack of jeopardy. It means that you can barrel into high, high speed corners in a way that you can't on the track. So it's, again, the psychology behind it that I find so fascinating. Yeah, indeed. Uh, during our uh, F2 virtual race, uh, Matt used a beautiful quote explaining the drivers aren't feeling it uh, in their bum, actually. The shifting, uh, which uh, is a quote of, of Matt Gallagher's. Uh, but yes, they are not feeling yeah. the, the, the feedback from the car. However, someone like Danny Berezny is so used to uh, racing in the F1 2019 game. Uh, he's on pole. We'll soon watch that lap that took him to pole position going into this. As you, oh, we can do it right now. Um, it was just brilliant. But again, like you're saying, it's trying to find find his cues, knowing when he has to send it, when he has to ease back off a little bit. But other times, he could just put his, his foot down and just go for it. Yeah, as we said, he does love this circuit. And it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy with these races. They perform well there once, they perform there well again. And he clearly is enjoying him out, uh, himself out there in his Alfa Romeo um, and, and putting in a great performance. Let's hope he can translate that for his sake into a win. Yeah, but sometimes it, with a driver going to a circuit they've done mm -hmm. well at before, the, can complacency uh, lean in there just I'm a little bit? I'm not sure, no. There's no complacency here. These guys are at the top of their game, and uh, pardon the pun, <laughs> but it's true. I mean, that, that there's, uh, that, that there's no let up. You know, they, they are there to deliver. And that's what he did so well today in qualifying. Yeah, and obviously we will get to this race at Interlagos and Danny Bresny will be on pole position. Uh, looking at the other uh, places uh, for, up for grabs for these guys, Alvaro Caraton, as Matt mentioned, uh, doing much better uh, now that he is in his own home, uh, feels far more confident and comfortable. Uh, then we will have also uh, if we will also have, I was just checking on my phone that I made all my notes. There's so many pieces of paper here <laughs> to try and keep up to date with everything. Uh, but yes, um, obviously there can be a let up and we have seen it in the past pro exhibition races. If you are on pole, you tend to win the race. This is what we've noticed. So if you were to back one driver, you would definitely be looking at Danny to, to do this. Oh, yeah, but there's a lot of pressure on him coming from behind. I would love to see a bit of rain in this race. I mean, I know what makes Interlago so very special are those changeable conditions, the fact that you can never rest on your laurels and assume that the race will just play out as it is, you know, 
the, the grid will finish as it started. This is why we see so many young drivers bursting through. And we'll talk more about the podium that we got there at the end of last year. But what a podium it was. Max Verstappen winning it. He's so brilliant in the wet. But also Gasly and ultimately Carlos Sainz making it onto the podium. What a podium. Yeah, Anything can happen at Interlagos. I think that was one of my highlights of last year. While we wait for the uh, formation lap to get underway, uh, it was just a, such a beautiful moment that he didn't get that podium. And then actually some people think, well, fair enough, I got it. But he actually celebrated it. Uh, were you there at that race? Did you see what was happening? You know what was so sad for him was that he wasn't on the podium at the time. But what McLaren did so brilliantly is that they recreated it for him. And rightly so. You know, he's worked very hard in his career and it was his first podium. And so, you know, you've got to milk it. Yeah, indeed. Uh, now, um, I did mention earlier, Marcel Kiefer has moved up from the Alfa Tori into mm. Red Bull. And, and a guy that you just mentioned there, Pierre Gasly, um, hopefully we'll be hearing from him later on tonight in the virtual Grand Prix, which is happening at 6 p.m. Uh, BST time. Uh, but that was such a great moment for him in terms of his racing career. And we're seeing drivers here in the pro exhibition who've got the chance to, to make a difference. As, as Matt and Alex said, there's no points up for grabs. They don't have to worry about that. There's no slipstream uh, teamwork being used. However, it's an opportunity to be seen. And, and using that example of Pierre Gasly, that really did say, don't forget about Pierre Gasly, and he get that podium. Well, yeah, it's a funny one, isn't it? And we talk about just how ruthless the Red Bull setup is, but it, it, it's like that for a reason. You know, we, they're bringing through the best young talent out there, and you have to deliver time after time, as Pierre Gasly found out, you know, to be relegated from the senior team. And then to come back at the end of the season with that podium in Interlagos was just brilliant, and, and you know, probably saved his career. But for Marcel Kiefer, it's fascinating stuff to see that step up, whether that brings with it extra pressure, whether he he will relish that and perform well under it or whether it will be too much. Let's wait and see. He'll also want to make up for picking up that penalty last time out. Yeah, he decided to take out Lucas Blakely. He did thank me after the show and said, uh, thanks for not mentioning it. Well, I will now. Uh, but listen, uh, listen, we will get to it. I'll tell you what we'll do, Natalie. We will get ready uh, for this race at Interlagos. I'm looking forward to it. Natalie's hoping for a little bit of wet weather. Gentlemen, Alex, Matt, are you hoping for wet weather or are you definitely hoping this stays nice and sunny? I think any race around Interlagos is very, very entertaining and it's already in progress. Lap number two, uh, sorry that we've not been able to bring you the start, but it is wet weather. So you can see they're on the intermediate tyre with Marcel Kiefer improving from his position of uh, second place moving up there and taking the lead. Danny Berezne, after that superb pole position in the dry, down to P3. So that will be so frustrating. But it's a totally different situation for all the drivers now. After perfecting the lap in the dry, it's now pure instincts in the wet. Completely different ball game. No DRS. This is all down to driving skill. And there's going to be some mistakes out there. They're going to be pushing to the absolute limit. They may not have even practiced in wet weather conditions. Although you're a bit silly if you haven't because it's Brazil. But uh, still, Marcel Kiefer actually already gapping 1.2 seconds to Lucas Blakely. Danny Beres, they must have made a mistake at the start to go down to P3. But uh, yeah, as you can see, looking down the, the field at the intervals, you can see it's very close all the way down the field. But right now, Marcel Kiefer pulling away. So Kiefer was very, very strong in the practice that they had earlier on. Uh, but that was in dry conditions. This is in the wet. And Kiefer, you know, sprinting clear right now. Uh, Lucas Blakely uh, had, that, had that coming together, of course. Uh, Kiefer with the penalty before. And then Blakely sent to the wall under breaking at the fastest part of the circuit a couple of weeks ago. Well, they're the top two at the moment. Bresne will try and gather and, and try and push the limits. On, the, on these tyres for the time being, but very wet conditions indeed around the 4.3 kilometres. Uh, we've got uh, Daniele Haddad in fourth place and the Caraton ahead of the driver you're focusing on through the corner. That is Michael Romanides with Johnny Tormala behind and then uh, David Tanitza, last year's champion, very Boromond in ninth and Nicholas Longay rounding out the top ten. So these early laps, a bit of exploration and then we're going to see a bit of rhythm develop and then can Kiefer keep up this fantastic pace, you have to say, on lap number four? It's going to be open-ended strategy as well to this, because before it was going to be a simple, soft to mediums, whereas this kind of opens up a little bit more to how you feel in the tyres are, obviously how the weather changes, because we don't know what the weather's going to do right now. Uh, these guys will have some idea when they speak to their pit engineer, be giving uh, a heads up from, I believe his name is Jeff. He may have changed over the course of uh, the F1 games, but it was at least called Jeff, uh, or he. Uh, but I think in terms of 
it looks like it's getting heavier, if anything. And on the intermediates at the moment, as you can see, the green uh, striped tyre. And, yeah, right now it looks very, very wet. And I feel like I'm not going to say that it is, because it probably won't end up being that way and they won't stop at all. But it looks like it could be moving towards wet weather conditions. It just depends how the how it all develops over the next few laps. Because right now, lap four of 18, Marcel Kiefer still pulling away. He's not going to be the one to jump the gun and jump onto wets, is he? Because he's the one leading. He'll wait for the people behind him to make mistakes. Yeah, opportunity for those who are perhaps not having the race that they wanted. Someone like Bono Huis, uh, further down the order. Bono Huis, who uh, raced so well earlier in the uh, pro sports exhibition races earlier this year. It's Kiefer with the fastest lap of the race, a 117. So we're riding on board with Alvaro Caraton. Podium last time out for him. And he's got his teammate right behind him. So the gap increasing out front. Two seconds now between Kiefer and Blakely. And Danny Berezne less than a second away. And very, very tight this between the two Williams. Indeed, the battle for fourth with Daniele Haddad just up the road. And so uh, right now they transition from gauging the conditions to getting into a, a situation where they can begin to really push now and that is where we will see the mistakes creep in that is where we will see uh, some overtaking opportunities appearing but Carrotton right now almost being nudged through that corner by Michael Romanides his teammate and they're all having to be patient the exit uh, coming up to where the race leader is right now this is such an important corner isn't it Matt because you're carrying all the momentum from this point on all the way to turn one Yep, absolutely, and I'm just flabbergasted as to how quick Marcel Kiefer is. We saw how close qualifying is. It makes me think that maybe he's looked at, because I think you do get a, some sort of heads up in qualifying as to what the race conditions are going to be. I'm just thinking whether Marcel Kiefer changed something on his setup to just make it just a little bit more bearable in these wet weather conditions. I might be wrong, he might just be driving the absolute race of his life. And obviously these are secrets that Marcel Kiefer, I'm sure, will not be sharing at the end of this race either. But right now, 2.2 seconds ahead of Lucas Blakely. And, well, if, if fastest laps keep uh, coming in from Marcel Kiefer, we're, then it's absolutely not getting any wetter and uh, he's very comfortable out in front at the moment. A little bit of a gap as well from P3 to P4. Now with Daniele Haddad just over a second behind Danny Beresnay. Of course, there's no DRS in these wet weather conditions, but for now, it seems like the uh, weather's stabilized at the moment. And if we see any fastest laps, it's an indicator it's getting drier rather than wetter. David Tanitza, pole position last year uh, in the eSports Championship, eighth position at the moment. Uh, you, you don't want to have a go at someone because we've become used to them being so successful, but is this a little lacklustre by his very, very high standards? Yeah, you have to say, down in P8, I think he'll want to at least make a few positions up from there because the thing with David Tanitza from last season was the fact he came out the blocks just completely and utterly gunning, you know, wins left, right and centre, and he just got a huge gap in the championship before anyone really could then fight back and then he had a few lackluster performances a fourth a fifth Rasmussen then starts to think oh maybe there is a chance at the shot of the title so Tanitza's not bulletproof and you know you can see here down in P8 everyone in the comfort of their own homes putting in absolute performances you have to say from Marcel Kiefer Blakely Haddad these guys you don't expect to be right at the front they're there now, and I think it will definitely be a wake-up call for Tanitza if he does stay in P8, that maybe he has a little bit of wet weather conditions at the very least to, to, to train for, for the upcoming races. No one making huge progress at the moment, but we are counting through the laps quite quickly. Not a huge margin, as you can see from the timing graphic on the left-hand side. Really, for anyone, we've got a gap between the top three uh, before we get to this train, and we go on board with David Tanitza, the driver that we've been talking about. Usually races with the uh, dinosaur mascot and Tonzilla. Was Tonzilla that you famously uh, knighted him as? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you say something completely mad in commentary, and it turns out to be great branding it's for a driver. Beautiful. There you go. Uh, he is right now, though, just focusing on the back of the Red Bull. And you see just a little bit of a twitch there, interrupting the momentum. That's a that's not a simple corner, that one. Uh, in the wet you don't even think about it in the dry but that is a that is a challenge as they go down to the famous center s's always a great overtaking opportunity 
Everyone's steering coping steering very, wheel. very well right now. Sorry, Alex, just yeah, go on. steering wheel. I'm just uh, looking at the lap times because uh, it said there uh, on Tanitsa's dashboard that he did a 118.1, so not really changing much in terms of the conditions out there at the moment. And it seems as though intermediates will be the tyre for the entire race at, at this stage because I think Kiefer was in the 117s when he set his fastest lap. He hasn't set a fastest lap since, but that will be the tyres degrading more than the weather changing. And, uh, yeah, you can see not huge amounts of raindrops flying. It's just staying in that sort of horrible element where it's just... You, we're, we're praying that it will cha change to dry or change to wet. We want to see the, the, them sliding around and really struggling. But the, the thing is, obviously, this track is amazing for overtaking, amazing for um, you know, dive bombs into turn one, for example. But because these guys are so closely contested, they just sit in a train at the moment. And they, we just need to see those mistakes, which at the moment, it just shows they're all at the top of their game at the moment, or at the front at least, which we're, we're focusing on at the moment. Uh, so Lucas Blakely, 2.2 seconds behind Kiefer. Is he the only one to have made a mistake? Is Kiefer just pushing harder than anyone else? We'll see in the next few laps whether Kiefer's pace just starts to be uh, bringing him back towards the field. Maybe he's pushed those intermediates a little bit too hard. But for now, very much in control. Alvaro Caraton edging closer to the racing points ahead now. So these are going to be uh, overtaking moves if they develop towards the end. There have been many, many, many laps in progress. This is incremental, inching up to the back of the car in front before you're able to make a move to the outside, make a move to the inside, whatever you choose around this circuit where there are opportunities. But right now, uh, you can see that Haddad is potentially struggling as we go into the second half of the race, but not really struggling because he's in P4. He's trying to stay there. Uh, Caraton knows that he can't afford a half move because there are so many cars in close proximity behind him. If he's going to go to the inside, he's going to have to be hugely committed. Absolutely. Turn one, great chance, and, and turn four as well. But with no DRS, it's in even more of a struggle with no mistakes. These drivers are on the ragged edge, and for now, it seems as though the top four are pretty relaxed. Caraton, as we're riding on board with him, we're looking back to his teammate. Just the closest, really, at the moment, and it's, oh, it's, it's, it was under two tenths, almost. But unfortunately, even with Daniele Haddad's not really getting much slipstream from Berezne, he's able to keep Caraton behind. Will there be any sort of team tactics? I don't think so. I don't think the Williams are going to swap drivers anytime soon. This is every man for themselves. Quick word on Tian Yu Tang, mm. down at the bottom of the field at the moment. Bit of a shame for him, really. Maybe a, a bit of an eye-opener coming from uh, winning the Chinese championship into the, the full-on big leagues. You have to say, this is the best of the best, the world's fastest drivers. Three and a half seconds off, not, not too bad from Holtzman in, in P19. He's there or thereabouts, but definitely back to the drawing board a bit, I think, to, to make his way up this field. Yeah, in not too far away from the back of Holtzman and uh, Graham Carroll, uh, directly ahead, trying to used to be with Red Bull, with Red Bull in the lead, and just keeping that gap pretty static right now. Marcel Kiefer, uh, Lucas Blakely in P2, and Berezne having been as close as six tenths of a second at one point earlier on, dropping back now, 1.1 seconds away. So we're focusing on Enzo Benito. He is directly behind our most recent race winner, and it's Brendan Lee with a fine answer to his critics last time out. And now into the pits comes Enzo Benito. So what's Benito going to go for there? Probably another set of intermediates, if I'm not mistaken. Kiefer set the fastest lap there, 117 again. Not been a huge amount of change in the track conditions, but then is he going to go for dry? It's too wet, surely? Yeah, I wondered if he was going to gamble, but it's surely too wet for that. Um, interesting to see that Benito trying to uh, trying something different. He wasn't in the major positions, was he? And he's got an opportunity to try something different. And, uh, well, if he's gone for slicks, I don't think it's too long until we'll be checking in on him facing the wrong way. Facing the right way out front, Marcel Kiefer. Uh, been in complete control. Uh, this is very impressive. The lack of mistakes we've seen from this entire field doesn't lend itself to the most uh, dramatic of races so far, but this is where Keeping that consistency up, lap after lap after lap, with the pressure on in the final stages, that is a totally different thing to do. And that is where we have seen in the last few weeks the pressure tell, lock-ups, wide moments, occasionally spins, uh, poor judgment, 
The leader will know that, Marcel Kiefer, having got the penalty last time out after that high-speed moment. So you can see how gently they're applying the throttle there as they go up the hill. Immaculate stuff from everyone in this field right now, including the driver we're on board with, the hat of Floris Viers, who has, uh, in Albert Park, he was very good indeed running in the uh, sharp end of the grid down there in 16th today so not quite his conditions as we run into the final stages and uh, Kiefer right now will just be desperate to count down these laps and, uh, and see the checker flap. I think we might see dries towards the end of this race. Enzo Benito 100% went on dries. I was watching the interval of his time between himself and Tian Yu Tang, and it's been going up all the while. Just waiting for that to switch around and go from 18 to 17 to 16, because that is the switchover point. We've got enough laps for it to be worth coming in for dries as well, because you saw in qualifying they were doing mm. 107s. At the moment, they're in the 117s, which is a combination of the, the weather conditions and the, the wear on the current intermediate. So I reckon we're a couple of laps away. Will some of these guys, if not all of them, probably because uh, I, I am wrong a lot of the time, but they might all stay out on intermediates, whether it gets towards lap 15, 16. Could be an interesting crossover point to, to watch out for, but right now Enzo Benito still losing time uh, on those super softs. Yeah, that's a gamble that hasn't quite worked. It's like when you lose all your prizes from the game show. They can take <laughs> away the car and the boat, and you're down there in, in 20th position. But is it the right time now? Is the less spray there? It still looks very, very wet to me here. It still looks beyond gamble territory, if you like. Yeah, I'm still watching Enzo Benito, 23.3. Now another half a second. Benito's not that slow. So I think it's still a little bit too early for Daniele Haddad, who's thrown away a great uh, result, you have to say, if this is the wrong call from him. Running in P5 or 6, I think he was. I think it was P6 before he came in. Maybe and, the, one and, the, lap. and the lap length doesn't work in your favour here. If you do this around somewhere like Spa, you can make an enormous amount of time up when even you've got one lap to go, as we've seen in the past. But a very, very short 4.3 kilometre circuit here, you really are going to struggle to use that tyre advantage. So Haddad has gambled. We'll see if he makes any sort of progress. It's not worked for Benito. And will anyone else outside the top 10 decide that that is the way to go? in the final stages. Meanwhile, it's still a two-second gap out front. Uh, tip of the hat to her dad and Benito for, for giving us something else to talk about, giving us something else to look at, because it's all been very impressive in terms of talent out there, in terms of performance, but there hasn't Ooh, been a Marcel huge Kiefer, amount the leader. of changes. So Marcel Kiefer comes into the pit. Well, oh, this is changing a few things. The spray has been decreasing, but that is a that is a huge gamble. If Benito's was surprising, that is that is extraordinary. Is that going to work? The whole field, well, half of the field, into the pits. And Marcel Kiefer, who comes out on those soft tyres. Matt, you suspected this would happen. I'm going to be honest with you. I thought this was nonsense. <laughs> I thought we weren't going to see dries That's at all. That's here, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> but there are dries, and this completely changes the complexion. I love races like this. Lucas Blakely now going to try and make those intermediates last for as long as possible, all the while hoping the track doesn't dry out completely. Otherwise, that will be a quite useless tyre. About 10 seconds between the wet pace and the dry pace that we saw earlier in qualifying. Remember the fuel burning off, so they'll be roughly at the same sort of position. Kiefer from the race lead down to 10th uh, position, down eight places. That is really, really interesting that he chose to gamble. It's not uh, a, a source of any points. It's not for any prize money at the end, but it's still winning with a huge audience, with all of you watching at home. And now the race leader is going to do it as well. So Kiefer might have made an inspired call here. Into the pits come the top four. Will it be top five? Will anyone choose to stay out there? Right now, you can see catching hand over fist. Marcel Kiefer chose to go on. Did he choose the right time? Well, he's been so impressive today. Been impressive in the dry. Been impressive when he took the lead in the wet. Has he called that strategy perfectly? I think Kiefer's going back into the lead of the race. I think Kiefer's going to easily retake the lead here. Indeed, he does. So there he goes. And that is Marcel Kiefer coming out. Well, he gambled his lead but he's retained it. Nicely done. Lucas Blakely in second position. Alvaro Caraton now in third. And not a lot happened for those first laps, but then it was pure strategic brilliance from Kiefer, who now needs to show what he did in the wet on those dry tyres. 
And is this an opportunity to Danny Berezne, who was so quick in the dry to show that pace with a few laps to go? What a twist. What a twist. Love it. Kiefer pretty much nailed it. I think it was either 13 or 14 in terms of laps, because you can see the gaps 1.8 seconds. So Blakely maybe gained a couple of tenths, but it wasn't too much difference between the two laps because of how short the lap is. If we were racing around Spa, this could be a completely different story. And Lucas Blakely actually... 1.6 seconds now, slowly closing in on Kiefer. Did Kiefer make a mistake? I'm not sure, but I love to see Graham Carroll praying to the rain gods on his intermediate still, and he is tumbling down the order as he stays on his intermediates. He was in P6, he's now in 14th, so he has had uh, not a lap to remember. As Marcel Kiefer sets the fastest lap, but Caraton, three tenths quicker. Could we have a shootout towards the end of this race? At least for P2. And remember, if... Uh, Kiefer did make the adjustments that you suspected he might have done to the setup of his car. That is not that he's not quite in the window with the uh, car changes if we go to dry conditions. So that was just a theory from Matt, but if that was the case, then maybe Blakely and Carrotton can close in on the Red Bull, who has a margin of two uh, seconds at this point. Roman, uh, Michael Romanidas is up to seventh position as well. David Tanitza moved up to sixth after those uh, stops. And Enzo Benito had the right idea, just had it too early. And he has now retired after, well, getting the uh, right choice of tyres at the precisely wrong time. So unfortunate for him, because where he led, everyone else has followed. It is a 1.8 second battle for the lead right now. Lucas Blakely will be giving it everything. And uh, Keitha, well, if he'd, if he'd waited one more lap, it might not have worked out the way it has good response in the third and final sector for the German driver on board with Caraton, who has been looking at the back of a racing point for quite a long time in this contest. We're on to the penultimate lap now. It might only be second position. Danny Berezne not with the pace that took him to that electric pole position earlier on. Johnny Tormela, if anything, putting the serious pressure on Berezne for fourth place as we look at the battle for second right now on board with the Williams, but that is the uh, Red Bull all over the back of the Alpha in the background for fourth place. So it's taken a while, but the contest uh, really coming to the ball nicely now. We're about to head on to the final lap of the race. It just needs to be a tidy lap for Marcel Kiefer, and he's going to take his promotion really, really in the best way possible and take it all the way to the top step of the podium, providing he can complete the final 4.3 kilometres of Interlagos. You've got to hand it to Kiefer. What confidence to come in from the lead. It was very, very close as to which lap it was going to be, but he came in, complete confidence, great outlap, and he's maintained the lead ahead of Lucas Blakely and Alvaro Caraton. A shame to see Danny Beresley down in P4, two seconds off the podium, because, as you say, it was a fantastic uh, qualifying lap, 107.0. And we now see our fastest lap from Brendan Lee. Just shows the fine margins. We keep going on about it, but I just still cannot believe it. Even as an F1 gamer, as you know, I've competed back in the day. There was never, it was never this close. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not racing now. I don't think I'd have the uh, <laughs> the mentality to, to see so many people so quick. But last week, uh, last time out, winner Brendan Lee down in P11, and really hasn't had the strongest of showings. But because of how short the track is and how close again these guys are on pace, you just can't make uh, the, the moves that you can to, to, to make. Uh, yourself up into the top 10 and Brendan Lee you know just struggling down in 11th but he's probably only a tenth off the pace that's that's the scary thing well uh, we saw a drag race to the line uh, last time out uh, for a Mercedes versus a, a Toro Rosso with Pierre Gasly the real thing I think we were heading to a, a drag race there but what a superb performance from Marcel Kiefer who looked to have done enough there to take the checkered flag and a Red Bull driver gets uh, gets promoted to Red Bull and wins immediately we've seen that before Never, never heard that before at all, uh, Verstappen. <laughs> but yeah, it's a fantastic race. It's, it's great to see that element of strategy uh, coming into the uh, to the wet weather because uh, obviously that was it was a little bit stale. We're not going to you know over promote that. It was a little bit you know in terms of uh, the overtaking side of things. The strategy element uh, was was brilliant, and uh, it was great to see uh, Tom and Natalie. Uh, was it quite a, an enthusing uh, race for you? what condition was going to happen next in terms of the wet, what the tyres were going to say. I mean, we were talking about a particular race in which the super softs were used. 
Yes. Now, this is what I wanted to see. I wanted to see a drying track. Yeah. Um, you know, going out there where when aquaplaning could have become an issue at some point. You know, when you're driving blind and you're, you're acting on instinct and trust, trust of yourself, trust of your fellow racers, um, to not make mistakes, to know that circuit from memory, mm. apart from anything else. But then for the track to dry out, and this is the bit I love, is the strategy that comes in and the gamble, as we've talked about, that Marcel Kiefer just nailed today, of, of putting the tires the right tyres on at the right time. Uh, it reminded me of when um, Hulkenberg put it on pole back in 2010 and the track was drying out and drying out and everybody else just switched to the super soft, well, came on to the, the faster tyres a bit too late. Hulkenberg stuck on the super softs, put it on pole. It's just so brilliant, a short track like Interlagos, to see the track drying and to see the change that that makes to the racing and it's how you react to that that counts. Yeah, indeed. And Alex and, and Matt were kind of blind to that because, as they mentioned, myself, Keith will be able to talk to his uh, engineer or back in the pit uh, as is Jeff uh, I believe as he's called so so Marcel knew and that was the right strategy it's interesting to know why the other drivers didn't do the same thing but those are those fine margins that that get you across the line and become the winner again a fascinating part of esports is that so many racers out there in Formula One will do that on instinct they'll be able to feel what the tire is doing at that point the track they'll be able to feel the drying lines um, you, you don't get that with a game and obviously a, a computer game is very different to human instinct and so to, to nail it in the way that Kiefer did is seriously impressive. Yeah, um, obviously we we're bigging up Danny Berezny. We know how, how good he is uh, of an F1 esports uh, racing driver. And, and, and in this moment, it, it's just Marcel Kiefer and Lucas Blakely was doing very well. Alvaro Caraton was in third. We're just waiting for the final results to come through. But Alvaro Caraton, that's now back-to-back uh, -back, uh, pole positions uh, for, for him. And, and I, what do we put that down to? Is that knowing the experience of the tracks? Or is it just he's just finding his sort of um, vibrancy as a driver to go and compete and, and deliver? It's about getting into a groove isn't it and it's about finding where is your happy place to race and it may well be at your home who knows um, but it was impressive to begin with because uh, as Alex said there were no mistakes there was calm consistency under pressure which was great to see in the wet particularly because you would think that that would happen far more than normal um, but yeah you know I don't know whether it's instinct whether it's luck you know there might be a bit of both but it's about making the right decisions at the right times on a drying track yeah I mean um uh, Alex and Matt both said, as you know as well, guys, uh, from three years of F1 Esports Pro Series, you've got some veterans out there, but it's these newer drivers. Um, uh, for example, Lucas Blakely uh, mm. went in Albert Park, which was the Vietnam Virtual Grand Prix uh, race. Um, Blakely went from P19 to fifth. Uh, now, he got selected in the pro draft last year, Natalie. So, again, finally getting that opportunity to, to show what he's capable of. And as, as well with the Williams team loving Alvaro Caraton. Uh, and then Marcel Kiefer as well. The, the interesting storyline there is he'd moved up from Alfa, uh, for the Alfa Tori up into a situation where he had to prove himself for the yeah. Red Bull. And he's done exactly that. And, and that's going to do him a, a world of good. A massive amount of confidence will come with that. As you say, he's stepped up and he's delivered when it matters most. It's really interesting to see how different... Uh, racers have responded under these conditions. You know, someone like Graham Carroll, who we thought would bring all his experience to this, just didn't get off those inters at the right time. Also, Brendan Lee was a disappointing race for him, but, you know, as we say, he was only a tenth off the pace. This field is incredibly tight. You know, you can't suddenly say that someone's lost form because they tumbled down the order, because it's such a tight grid. Yeah, now, we didn't get to see him cross the line. However, uh, we do get to chat to him. The one and only, representing Red Bull this evening, Marcel Kiefer, your winner tonight. Uh, Marcel, you must feel very relieved after the last showing uh, last time out. Yes, definitely. I got a lot of criticism for the last time. I also just want to take this moment before I talk about myself. And again, on stream, because I didn't have the opportunity, apologize to Lucas for that incident. Um, it looked a bit different on my screen. I, I think there was a bit, of, a bit of internet connection involved, but still doesn't change the fact that I ruined this race. So I want to apologize for that. Um, but yeah, talking about the race, I knew I had to perform and I did. So that's all I can say. And um, I mean, it, that is also a bit something different but um i want to give this win to my uh, cat because she died exactly one month ago and oh. yeah so today i know i know marcel big uh, on your twitter as well and interviewing marcel side uh, a big part of your your racing uh, sort of like setup uh, with your cat so yeah uh, dedicating the race there but also lucas blakely it was was it nice to see him just behind you uh, across the line after the the incidents from the previous timeout 
yeah, I mean, definitely it was a good race. I just felt like a bit more comfortable, I think, than Lucas in the initial part of the race when it was a bit uh, wet and no one knew where to break and when to accelerate. And I think I had the right feel for that. And since then, I kind of could hold the gap. And at the end, I just brought it home, didn't push anymore. So what made the difference to you? Is it the confidence that you've been able to get for being promoted to the senior team? Is it the fact you are at home, you're able to relax a little bit more? What were the kind of key factors to the success tonight? If I'm honest, I don't really like driving at home. It feels a bit like league racing instead of like being at an eSports event. Um, but in overall, I think just like knowing that I drove for Red Bull and then overall also I wanted to prove something. I just wanted to show what I can do. I didn't do in quali. I was just P2, but I mean, in the race, I showed it. And, and I've got to ask, uh, Marcel, before we, we've, before we let you go and uh, celebrate uh, uh, this win, because uh, I know you've been streaming as well uh, while this has been happening from your point of view. Uh, but in terms of the, the lineup, the other drivers, have you been impressed with how everyone's just up to a, a level going into the races? It's unbelievable. I mean, we also do some practice sessions, like one official one um, and a couple ones off the official one. And everyone is super close. And also a huge respect to Danny for that amazing uh, pole lap. I couldn't have matched that in the session. So kudos to him and to anyone else, uh, everyone else in the session. It was unbelievable tight and I was literally sweating until the end and my leg was shaking. It's not easy. Like it looks like it's super easy, but I can tell you I probably had the last two weeks something like over 100 hours of in-game time. So a win on eSports is not just driving a game. It's really grinding and dedication paying off. Well, listen, uh, Marcel, I know that you now have to change roles because you're getting ready to uh, be uh, the team captain uh, and, and the sort of engineer for the Red Bull team. So thank you very much. Congratulations, Congratulations. to Marcel. Uh, he'll be thank stepping up now uh, to look after Alex Albon in the Red Bull uh, team and I think uh, Stuart Broad as well. But just to put that ill into context, congratulations to Marcel. He said there the hours that go in to getting that, that race win and that means a lot to him there. Absolutely. Uh, congratulations. I, I don't know how you're going to be able to celebrate under lockdown, but I hope you do. Uh, it's, uh, it's fascinating, actually, that he's able now to take that win from today and take it across to the Virtual Grand Prix and support his team in that way. It's a, it's a fantastic kind of dimension of the sport. Indeed. Well, listen, Natty, thank you so much. Don't go anywhere. I definitely need you for the, uh, the F1 Virtual Grand Prix. It's a massive thank you uh, to Matt Gallagher and Alex Jakes for the commentary. Uh, they'll be looking after you, uh, so don't go anywhere because stick around you'll get to see the f1 virtual grand prix also taking place at interlagos that is all on the way but a massive congratulations to marcel kiefer so um listen uh, epic scenes will be back next weekend as well uh, for more action and to all of the drivers that took part today thank you so much uh, but listen this f1 virtual uh, lineup is looking pretty sweet indeed charles leclerc will he be able to make it three wins out of three that is all all on the way, uh, but thank you very much for watching the Pro Exhibition Esports. We'll see you next time. Four five lights are on. It's all to race for. Come in the turn four. Oh, he's hit him. He's done it. What oh, he's a